Let's suppose you're in a very difficult job search and you're just not having any luck. Should you consider lying on your resume in order to get ahead? Well, stick around because in this video, we're gonna discuss if you should lie on your resume in order to get a leg up on the competition. Hey everybody, it's Brian from Life After Layoff, and today I wanna to talk to you about whether or not you should lie on your resume in order to get a leg up on the competition. Now, if you're in a particularly difficult job search, I know it can be very tempting to lie on your resume or flub things a little bit just to make yourself stand out a little bit more, and can that come back to hurt you? Now, as a corporate recruiter with over 20 years of experience interviewing and hiring thousands of people into some of the world's most well-known and well-respected companies, I'm gonna give you my opinion on it. And the reason why I'm making this video is I actually saw a fairly popular YouTuber making a video on this exact subject. They actually made a, a bunch of valid points and some things I probably didn't agree with. So I kinda of wanna dissect some of the circumstances in which lying on your resume may be a viable option versus some of the things that you absolutely never wanna lie about. Now I know when you're in a very difficult job search and you are not having the success that you were hoping for, it can be very tempting to maybe put some white lies into your resume in order to really meet the requirements and hopefully get that phone call by the recruiter. And, you know, in some cases, I do think that there's probably some some merit to doing that. Now, I'll say kind of high level, I would never condone advising somebody to lie on their resume um, because I feel like you really want to get hired on your merits. But there are some certain circumstances where you might actually want to consider painting in a few little white lies in order to optimize your chances of getting noticed by that recruiter because ultimately that's that's what it's all about. You know, a resume, you might think that it's gonna tell a story, oh, if I, if I could just get a, re a recruiter to t talk to me, then I can explain away some of these things. Um, unfortunately, it just doesn't work like that. If we don't see what we're looking for immediately and you know, I, I, have, I give you a five second glance on your resume, if I'm, if I'm not seeing what I'm looking for, you know, I'm putting you in the no pile and you're not even gonna have a chance to explain to me you know, why it is that you might be a good fit or explain away some of the things in your resume that might be a red flag for me that might cause me to skip over you. So I wanna jump into some of those circumstances in which I would suggest it might not actually be a bad idea to, I, I hate to use the term lie because lying says that you're absolutely fabricating what happened or what your past is. Um, I prefer to look at it as kind of manipulating it in order to uh, paint yourself or position yourself to be the, in the most advantageous position. So let's talk about the first one. Uh, and then I want to jump into some, some cer certain circumstances where it's absolutely never okay to lie. So the first circumstance that I would suggest that maybe a white lie might be okay is with job titles. Now as a recruiter, and I'm, and I'm recruiting a position that might be proprietary, so my job title might be pretty proprietary, even though I know on the broader market, other companies may call the job that I'm hiring for something different or more, maybe more common. So I might actually change that job title to try to match what the broader generic market might have. That way I have a better likelihood of getting candidates to apply for a position and you know have a better pool of candidates to choose from. I would suggest that it's probably okay to do the same thing as a job seeker. So if you had a proprietary job title and companies are running ads for specific, uh, for a job title that's maybe different than what yours is, but it's basically the same job, I think in that, cir that circumstance, I would certainly recommend changing your job title to match what the companies are looking for because I'm not necessarily, I'm, I'm gonna ask you about your job titles, but I'm not gonna go in and call your company and say, hey, what was the exact job title? So if you were a uh, production engineer level one and I'm looking for a manufacturing engineer, you know, it's gonna be basically the same thing. Um, and even though your company didn't have that job title, you know, it's not gonna hold you back. It's really just gonna make me look at you and go, oh, you actually have the job title that I'm looking for because I'm scanning your resume really quickly. It's five seconds that I give you a five second glance and if I don't see what I'm looking for, I'm moving on to the next one. So that's one that I would definitely look at changing and kind of making it a quote unquote white lie um, to, to manipulate your job titles. Now, you're still having done the job that I'm looking for, it's just you're trying to make yourself more discoverable by what's the more common kind of keyword. So that would be the first one that I would suggest that it would be okay to, um, to change, change things around a little bit. The second one would be if you are working for an employer and uh, say, say you're working in a contracting position and you are coming in through a third party agency, but you're specifically interviewing to work for a maybe a different company, a, a name brand company. 
and you went in through a contractor, but the only client that you're supporting is that is that third party. I think in that case, it's okay to say that you work for the third party because you're representing yourself as the third party. Maybe it's a client's or to, you know, in the case of recruiting, it's kind of pretty common that um, a lot of positions will be contract positions, but you'll be supporting just one employer. And if you go through the gauntlet of hiring to get hired in at the third party, but or at, at the main company, but you went through a third party, you know, the, the I don't think it's such a stretch to say that you work for that company because you passed the bar for them, the technical bar, in order to get in. So you pass that gauntlet. So if you're working for a contracted agency who places you into that specific company, it's fine to, to list your name that you work for that company. Now, if you're running into a situation where they're going to check references, though, and check backgrounds, you might want to make sure that you, they understand that it was a contracted, you were through a third-party agency because we're going to run in uh, when we run a background or something like that. Um, if they pull up uh, last employers um, or or anything like that, it's gonna if it shows a different name, then you have to explain that away. But again, I wouldn't. I think the name brand company on your resume would look better than some third party um, agency that I've never heard of. And especially if you're directly supporting, like in other words, you're part of that team with the, the larger company. And you know, for all intents and purposes, maybe you have the same email address as that larger company. And you know, the third party is just paying you then I think that that's totally okay to do that. Just again, just make sure that they know that that's the case um, as you get further along in the interviewing process so that there's no hiccups. Um, should they run a background and check and find out that you're not getting payrolled through the main company. The, the next thing that I think it might be okay to tell a white lie on would be potentially where you're located. Now, if you're trying to move to a new location, so say you're living in a certain area of the country and you're really targeting another area, and you say that you're you live there i think that in general it's going to be okay to do that because it'll give you a, a, a potential leg up um and in other words you're living in now they, they think you're living in that area however i would say if you do that make sure that you are prepared to move there yourself without any assistance because i don't think it's fair to a company to then um, all of a sudden you spring that on them in an offer process and say oh by the way i actually live uh, eight hours away and I'll need relocation assistance. I mean, I don't think that that's necessarily a fair thing to do. Um, so you, if you are not from that area um, and you're looking to move and you're going to, and you're going to say that you live in that area already, you might get more phone calls in that local market, but just be prepared that, you know, you might have to, you're going to have to be able to make that happen. And even with on-site interviewing, it could be tricky. So, you know, if you're all of a sudden now incurring a, a flight cost and all that stuff, you know, that, that cost might go back on to you if that company is not budgeted and is only looking for a local candidate. So um, I think it's okay to do that. I don't think that's going to cost you a uh, cost you a job offer, but I would suggest that you understand um, all the parameters around it. I'd also say that there's also a chance that you could kind of work yourself out of a full compensation offer. Um, in other words, a relocation. If, in some cases, uh, the companies that I work have worked for in the past, we would actually have a, an appetite to relocate people. So if you're applying as a local candidate and suddenly at the end of the offer process, like we do the offer and you say, oh, actually, I live farther away, um, you might actually kind of work yourself. We may have actually reloaded you and paid for all of that. Now you're incurring all that expense. So uh, it, if you feel like saying that you're a local candidate and that that's going to give you a leg up, I think it's fine to do that. But just know that it could kind of come back to, you know, you could kind of cost yourself a little bit in compensation. Um, but it's, it's really your, your call. I don't think that there's an issue using that as a white lie. I'd say the next thing would be the dates of employment. Now, I'm going to use this as an asterisk because I think that there's a slippery slope. You don't want to lie about the this the dates, the specific dates. Like in other words, you don't want to you don't want to flub it and say that you worked there six months longer on one end and six months longer on the other end and added a whole year. But if you are working in, uh, say, you've been there for a few years, you can put just the years, and then you know even though you're not putting the necessarily a specific month you're kind of just making it generic and using the you were here from 2017 to 2020 um, may have been you started in august of 2017 and, and finished in you know f february of 2020 but it's still it kind of looks like maybe you spent a little bit longer time there uh an astute recruiter is going to ask you about your times in at, at those locations um just so that they can kind of get an idea of total years of experience but it can kind of make you look a little bit more desirable as a candidate 
um, especially if you have some job hopping in there um, that you you can kind of you can kind of massage it a little bit to make your resume look a little cleaner so that's another one that I'd say it's probably okay you're not technically lying you just um, you're just not necessarily broadcasting the specific dates um, the, and it, it's up to the recruiter to then again you're looking for the maximum chance of trying to getting me to call you for an interview so these are things that you're not necessarily lying about and not falsifying, but you're just kind of not telling the whole story in order to get an, an, ad, an advantage in the market. So I think in that case, it's going to be accurate. But if you get to the time, if, if I ask you that question, when was your specific dates of employment, you better be honest with me because if you, you come back and you weren't, then it's gonna, it, 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 it could be a bad look on you and it'd be, it might be hard to explain away. Um, I would say the next major thing um, would be skills. Now, if you're listing, if you're looking on, um, when, we, when we do skills in our job descriptions, we have basic skills and then there's usually preferred section. Usually the basic are non-negotiable. So you have to have those in order to get a phone call. And that's, I mean, that's realistically baseline. Um, the preferred is usually what the hiring manager says that they're looking for. And that's the kind of candidate that we get, they would get excited at. So as recruiters, that's what we're like really looking for. So if you are if you if you're noticing that you don't have skill in certain things that are pretty common in the market and it's something that you can easily get and realistically you can learn pretty quickly and it wouldn't be too hard of a, a learning curve then I say, then I say it's probably okay to say that you maybe have a skill that you don't have so long as you can learn the skill by the time you walk in the door. Um, so if you falsify a skill that's maybe it's a, a computer programming language that you've never programmed in before, realistically, that's going to take you a long time to develop and you're not probably going to be able to do that um, in, in the time frame that you would be to start. But if it's a kind of a simple skill or something that's pretty common that maybe you just lack or maybe it's a specific software program, I mean, maybe uh, they use uh, Google Docs and you've only used Microsoft Word. I mean, the, the, the jump between the two is not huge. You could probably spend a, an hour or two and figure out how to use Google Docs. And then, you know, it's okay to say that you know how to use Google Docs. But if you're, if you've, if you're looking at a more kind of a, a major skill set um, that you're lacking, um, I would not, I would not lie about that. So that would be the, the the next thing. Again, the skill should be easy to main, or easy and easy and readily available for you to acquire those skills and being able to apply them in a job setting in a reasonably functional way. And then the last thing that I would suggest is I wouldn't necessarily advertise that you got fired, um, that you got laid off. Um, or maybe that you quit a, a job. I wouldn't advertise that on your resume. Um, and if it's asking you um, why you left a position, I you know try. I would even leave it blank, and um, you know, or just put better opportunity. And in that way, because if you put down that you were fired, uh, realistically, we do. I hate this. I hate to admit it, but we do judge that. And you're looking to explain, and hopefully you have a good explanation. Now, if you were fired for the um, at, at the role. You better have a good explanation as to why you got fired. Um, so you know that's probably another video for another time. But you don't want to necessarily lie about that. Um, uh, so if I ask you that directly, you don't want to lie about it. But on your application, if they're asking you that, you may want to just kind of come up with something that that's not directly saying I got fired because that's going to just put you in automatically in a no pile. You're never going to have a chance to explain yourself. Uh, but again, we don't want to lie about it but we just don't want to necessarily come out right out and say we got um, fired. So I, can, I think the moral of the story is with these white lies is we're not lying about what happened or what we have um, so much as we are um, kind of massaging things and making it look a little more palatable for a recruiter to make that initial call. And then it's up to you to sell yourself. So that's kind of overarching. I, I don't advocate you just flat out lying and saying you don't you you have you've worked 20 years when you only have two years of experience because then you're going to be exposed and you know, it's going to you're never going to get hired that way. So let's talk about on the flip side. What are some things that I would suggest that you um, never lie about? Because there are going to be a few things that, and from an HR perspective. Just know that if you lie on an application and it's blatant, like you say you have an education that you don't have or some, some certification that you don't have or, 
or whatever, if, if we find out that you've lied or maybe you didn't even work for a company, um, if we find out that you lied on that, we are it's it's a falsification of a document of an official document, and it is a terminable offense. And I have actually seen people get terminated once it was discovered that they were no longer, or I've seen offers rescinded too when they discovered that they actually didn't have what they claimed they had on their application. So the the form that you fill out and send into the company that application is actually a legal document. Just so you're aware of that. So that's why I don't condone you flat out lying about the skill that you have. Let's talk about the things that you definitely do not want to lie about in your application. I would say the company that you work for. Now, I know earlier in this video, I just got done saying that it's probably okay to use a third party. If you came in through a third party, it's probably okay to use the, I guess you call it the alpha company, um, as you the, the person that you uh, work for, or the company that you work for. Um, but I would say only if you were you had their email address, you worked as part of their team, your day-to-day, -day, every single day was there, your boss was actually part of that that alpha company and not the contracting company that you worked for. I would say those are the only circumstances where I would say, yeah, it's fine to use that name of that company. Um, on the flip side, if you have flat out never worked for a particular company or say a, you, you apply for a job, it says we, you, you have to have worked for a FANG or a startup uh, or something like that where you needed a specific skill set and you just lied and said, yeah, they're, 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 yeah that's what they were. Um, that's gonna. That's something that I would absolutely never, because you're gonna get exposed when you go through an interviewing process. You're gonna get exposed, and if we find that that's falsified, you know, you're never gonna get an offer. So I would definitely not lie and make up a an employer that you just didn't work for. Second thing would be your references. So if you are giving a reference as somebody, and say say we we want to talk to your previous boss, and you call up your friend. In fact, this is one of the things that this um, big YouTuber had was talking about is. They had a, a friend that they um, that they went over uh, and asked, "Hey, I'm I'm going to be interviewing for this company. They want to talk to my previous boss, and I know my previous boss was is not going to give me a good review or a good reference. Can I? Can you pretend to be my boss? Um, I would absolutely. I think that's terrible advice, and I would never recommend that you do that. Um, if it is in a circumstance where you are not on good terms with your boss, uh, previous boss, I think that it's more. It would be more beneficial to you to explain why in a craftful way to the recruiter or to the hiring manager rather than, and then try to find another person that might be a good, uh, good fit. I mean, we, we all get, there's occasionally going to be circumstances where you you just don't get along with a person or it's just the, the, the situation was bad or toxic and that's fine. It's better to not lie about that and kind of have a good explanation than the other way around. Um, the next thing that I would say is the dates of employment. And now, again, I know that I said that you it's okay to kind of keep things vague and ambiguous, but you, you don't want to lie about the specific date. So you don't want to add a year or two on on either side to make it look like you were better. So if you got laid off and you had an eight-month or nine-month gap, you don't want to lie and say that you're currently working because that's, again, that's falsifying. It's just flat out not true um, versus... It's okay to keep things vague, uh, but and maybe just use generic long-term dates, like just years, if you've worked somewhere for a particular year, but I would not use the specific dates uh, or lie about the specific dates because that's gonna come back and bite you, and that's flat-out falsification of your record. Um, I would say the next thing is is skills that are not easy to main or easily um, acquirable and easy for you to get beforehand. So if again if it's a computer programming language that they require and you don't have that skill, I would absolutely not recommend saying that you have that particular skill if you don't have it. So um, I would uh, only do it if it's something that's easy to main uh, easy for you to obtain and you can get it before day one of start. So. That's the only circumstance where I'd say it's okay to lie about or say you had a skill that you really didn't have. Um, the, next, the next major thing would be education. Um, if you do not have a degree from somewhere, you will absolutely get exposed in a reference check or in a, in a background check process because we will check your... We, we, actually call up those different organizations and um, your institutions that you maybe claimed you got a degree in. If you falsify a degree, there's no explaining. If you flat out don't have it, if you, you're going to lose the offer and you're going to be blacklisted from that company. So do not, um, do not lie about education that you may have had. Same thing goes for a, a criminal record. If you have a criminal record and you, you casually omit that you had a felony, 
you're, it's going to be exposed. There's no way around it because we, we go in, we do a reference or we go do a background check and it checks all that stuff. So if, it's just not worth lying to because you're going to lose. It's better to be honest about it and explain it than it is to uh, lie about it because you're for certain not going to get the job if you lie about it. You may not get the job if you don't lie about it and you're honest about it and as long as you're sincere. But if you flat out don't disclose it and you know it's, it's specifically asked of you and you lie about it, you're never going to get the job. And then the last major thing would be the experience. So if you are, something requires you to have five to seven years of experience in a certain type of thing and you only have two and you lie about it on your resume, not only are you going to get exposed uh, in an interviewing process and chances are you're not going to make it through an interview anyway because we're going to be able to tell that you don't have the experience, but even if you did get past the gauntlet and you started into a job, you're just going to be set up to fail because you're going to be looked at as somebody that already has that experience and that's why they hire an experienced person and you're going to flounder. And so I don't know why you would want to lie about that anyway because it's, it's going to not look good on your career and then you're just going to end up with a turnover. Um, so it'd be better to find a... a role appropriate or experience appropriate position for yourself um, before resorting to lying about that. So those are the circumstances that I would suggest it's okay to probably stretch the truth a little bit or maybe omit some of the truth uh, to make yourself look a little bit better in the recruiter's eyes uh, versus stuff that I would absolutely not recommend that you lie about. If you're looking to get through that recruiting process and you're just not sure, you think that the resume might be an issue for you, I actually specialize in that. I have a really good training course called Resume Rocket Fuel. Now, it's going to take you from cradle to grave on if you've never written a resume before all the way to getting a recruiter and ATS approved resume. That's something that I use for myself and have had success even getting my own jobs. Um, I created it from scratch and it is designed to from a recruiter's perspective, what we look for. Um, so it's a really great resource. If you just don't know where to start with resume ro with your resume, check out Resume Rocket Fuel. I will leave a link below. I also have a website called alifeafterlayoff.com. It's loaded with tips on how to best position yourself for the job search process, um, how to get through the gauntlet of hiring, and ultimately how to land the dream job. Hey, if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I sure do appreciate you dropping by, and we will see you on the next one.